What's going on, Skid? We're about to descale a Renai water heater. First time ever doing this, but I read the instructions. Watch the YouTube video. I think I get the point. Ugh. Turn the power off to it. Turn the gas off. And turn the water off. Coming to the coming to the water heater. There we go. Got a dog, got a doggy out here with me. Hey, pup. All right, we turn the water off. Gas is off, so we're gonna open these. If your valve or if your water heater doesn't have this, then you won't be able to do it like this. Make sure that valve is open. That one right there, if yours has it. So what we got here? With Jay Booty. Jay Booty's with me. Uh, we got some Haymaker water heater descaler. I'm not sure if there's a better brand, but this is what we're using. Pour this in here to one gallon of fresh water. Then we're going to drop our descaling machine in here. This is just a filter, filter that goes on there. I'll leave links to all these in the description below. Have it delivered to your house if you want to order one. Old Jordan's pouring in the solution, also known as Jay Booty. Some people ask where Jay Booty got his name. I saw this Michigan football player. His name was Jake Butt. That was the guy's name. Jake B U T T was his last name. And his Twitter handle was Jay Booty. So I came into work the next morning and just started calling him Jay Booty. I mean, I don't know. I just made it up. It has really no kind of special significance or anything. So we'll connect this hose here. This goes on the cold side. And this will go onto the pump. You can bear me that pump there, J Boot. Screw it onto the pump. Again, first time doing this, so I'm sure we'll get better the more we do it. How are you going to get experience if you don't try anything? I mean, you might be bad the first few times you do something. Well, that's okay. Experience breeds wisdom. So, so we can shoot this off the side when we, when we have to clean it out. Well. <clears throat> Let's submerge the pump. Ready? Put it in the solution. I mean... And this is going to flow back out of the hot into the bucket. Money shot, Jay Booty. Fire in the hole. Whoa! <laughs> Leak in the hose. All right, Skid Bros, we're running up on a little snag here. These things are leaking when we turn the pump on in the bucket. So we're having to put a double double gasket in there. So I was about to roll off the old ledge. So we double gasket. Put two up in there. Because these things don't seem to be tightening very well and getting a good seal on this. We're just using standard washing machine hoses. You can get them at Home Depot, Lowe's. But this feels better because they're really loose. Until we put the double gasket in. Tighten them down. Make sure that valve is open. That one right there, if yours has it. Fire in the hole. There we go. Son of a bitch. Nah, Jordan. Now, um, yeah, it was leaking real bad, but now it's now it's working. I had to put the old double gasket up in there. Just a little tech tip if you guys are having problems with these things spraying. But that's it. Just do this for 30 minutes. Yeah, 32 ounces to one gallon of water. 
throw the old pump in there and just let it circulate out. We'll be back in 30 minutes. All right, we got about a minute to go. There's a little bit of sediment in there. I don't know if you can see that. A little dirt on the bottom of the bucket. It's almost been 30 minutes, so we'll do a little recap. Again, come out, turn the power off, turn the gas off, turn the water off to the cold and hot, then open up your your valves here so water can flow in and then throw your machine into the solution with the two hoses and turn it on that's all there is to it all right it's been 30 minutes we'll get my pliers here we're going to turn that off now we're going to have to flow some fresh water through so we will turn Turn that off. And we'll leave the hot open. We'll grab the hot hose. We'll let that shoot off the side. And then we'll just turn our cold valve on. Just the cold, don't have to do the hot. Now this is uh, sending it through fresh water to get the solution out. This is coming out here. Not going into the apartment yet. And the instruction says to do this for about five minutes or until the water is clear. Looks pretty good though. But we'll give it five. All right, we ran it through for five minutes. That water looks pretty clear. Turn that off. Now, let's see here, pliers. We'll turn the hot. Turn our valves back off. And we can take our hoses off. Put the old cappies back on. It has been descaled. All right, so these valves are off now. Just do everything in reverse. Turn the water back on. Okay, water is on. Turn the power on. I'll do the gas. Gas is on. And turn the power back on. Right, turn it on. All right, it's running. Just heard the flame kick on. No leaks. Make sure the water's hot. Yep, we have hot water. All right, bros, if that's it, first time I've descaled a water heater. Just wanted to take you guys along for the journey. It's not that hard. Read the instructions, you know, watch the YouTube video. Only snag we hit was the hose is leaking, so we had to put the double gasket in there just to keep it, you know, get it tight against the valve there. But that's about it. Other than that, it's pretty easy, really simple. What's up, everyone? Long time no see. I'm going to have to replace this first company coil today. It's a little slant coil. 
We, uh, it's, it's been a repeat offender. Like we'll charge it with refrigerant and then four months later it'll be empty again and we brought out the sniffer, the you know, Freon refrigerant leak detector and it rang off heavy. Heavy in two spots. You can kind of see the oil right there, that dark on the end over there. Right along here, that's oil. It was, the sniffer rang off there and over here, so it's two big spots. So I'm gonna have to take this coil out and replace it. Got all my stuff here, got the torches. There's my new coil. I won't be showing the whole process because due to battery on my camera and just the length of the video, but you know who has great videos? Who records every every move? If you want to study this guy, Walt over at WWHVAC. Search him, man, he is awesome. So I'm going to pump the system down. I'm gonna put all the refrigerant out into the condenser first. And take the caps off your service valves. Again, I won't go through the whole process, but if you wanna see the whole process, Walt over at WWHVAC, he has fantastic HVAC videos. I love studying that guy. And he lets it roll too, like an hour long. It's great. So you get your uh, your pump down wrench here. I'll leave tools. I'll always leave the tools that I use in the video description below the link, so you can go get them. So the refrigerant for you new guys flows this way, and then comes out the little liquid line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trap all the refrigerant into the condenser by closing this all the way I'm gonna close this up then I'm gonna turn the unit on and all the refrigerants gonna be able to flow in but not out so there will be no refrigerant in the line set up to the coil now if you had to do anything inside the condenser you would have to recover and some people don't like that I pump it down when I do the coil but Guys, I've got units I did the same way seven years ago at my older property. They're still going strong and they're good ones, so that says a lot. All right, that's closed nice and snug. Do the same over here, but I don't close it all the way. I just leave it a skeeter leg open. All right, now that I got the suction line service valve closed all the way, I'm gonna open it up just a little bit just a skeeter leg about ten five six seven eight nine ten so eleven twelve we'll go twelve so that way the refrigerant can still go in but it won't be able to come out again I won't show the whole process but I mean guys like I say about swimming you can watch all the videos about swimming read all the books about swimming you're not really gonna know until you dive in so just dive in. That's how I learned watching you know YouTube videos, kind of getting an idea on how to do it, and then diving in. Then you'll find your find your system. All right, I'm gonna hook up the gauges and pump it down now. All right, got the gauges hooked up. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much for the new guys when this gets all the way almost to zero, I'm gonna start cranking that down to close it. Then I'm gonna let go of the uh, contactor. It's got a low pressure switch in, so I push the contactor in with my screwdriver here. So. Here we go, ready for the pump down. Gonna need two hands, but you get the idea. When this baby gets close to zero, I'm gonna wrench that down. I gotta use my film hand. Just all the refrigerant is going in, into the condenser. Moving on down. All right, I'm about to start closing that off. I need my film hand to do it, but there we go. That's how you pump it down. All right, there we go. That's pretty much zero. You can let a little bit of excess out. It's not enough to worry about, but all the refrigerant, refrigerant now is in here. So now I can go do the coil. The line set all the way up to the coil is empty. All right, we've got all the screws out of the cover. I'm gonna have to sweat this one off, man, and it is tight. Look at how tight that is. Somebody already got the 
the insulation on the side there. So what I do is I get a squirt bottle and I wet the crap out of it. Look, somebody burned it there. Must have been the installers. I got to take that transformer off right there and move it over so I don't burn it. And oh, somebody already melted the grommet. I get those grommets out of there as well. See how it's melted though? Somebody's already done it for me. But look how tight that is. I mean, how are you going to get your pipe cutter in there? You can't get your pipe cutter in here and turn it. It's not going to happen, so we got to sweat it out with the torch. <sighs> okay, let's see. I mean, don't you love those YouTube tutorials? I mean, I like them. I like watching them, but you know how the guy brazing has like a th you know wide 360 move movement around the pipe. Well, this is real life. Here's brazing in real life. I have to get this door switch out of the way. I'm not a fan of these. I've already had a couple of these go bad. I guess it's for the hot water hydronic heating. I've seen them on gas stuff. I understand gas, but I don't know. I'm not a fan. So I got to get that out of the way so I don't burn it. And I got to get this low voltage down. I kind of like that they put the holes over here because you can put your brazing rod through there and get the back. Otherwise, man, I mean, you're going to be burning insulation. All right, now I'm going to get this transformer out of the way. Turn the breaker off. All right, Skid, we're about ready to get it out. It's the doggone prepping that takes so long. It's not the getting the coil out. It's the doggone prepping. So I had to take this off to kind of get the low voltage up and out of the way because it was going across here. That's where I'm going to have to sweat it off. There's the TXV. We'll pull that bulb off the TXV bulb and I had to remove the where is it the high voltage out of there the white and the black wire I had to get that out the transformers wedged up in there I had to remove that off so it's the prepping that takes a while but we're almost there they got the bulb on with a with a doggone star star bit <clears throat> at least the equalization tube is you know bolt on not one of those little pain in the booty things you got to braze in so that's a plus and I also like to take this off because you can bring the brazing rod through the side here and get the back right there when you're brazing goes right to the back so just a little little tech tip all right the TXV bulb is out there's nothing wrong with the TXV but I don't save them I don't plan on reusing them, but what say you guys in the comment section? Would you save the TXV? I mean, the coil is leaking. There's nothing wrong with the TXV. I'm curious to know what you guys think or what you guys do. Do you save the old TXV? Would you install an old TXV? Because the new coil comes with a new one on it. So that's what I just, I just put the, put the new one in. Now we got to get this tray up out of here. This just comes on out. All right, we'll unbolt the equalizing tube. And we'll do the same with the TXV. Just get you some channel locks, hold that, and then boop with the old crescent wrench. It'll unbolt right off. Then I'll sweat it out from up here. Again, you can't get your pipe, your pipe cutters in here. You know, maybe. Some super techs out there like, oh, I'd cut it out. Oh, would you? Okay. Right. I just ain't got it in me to use an old TXV, big dog. I mean, maybe if it was an emergency kind of deal. But saving it and putting it on a, a new coil or something. Or doing it as a repair? I don't know. What say you guys? Give me. Maybe if you guys can convince me. <clears throat> oh, doggone grommet! The old melted grommet up there from the last guy. Usually I can scoot this up and out, get it up out of the way. Cause I'm gonna have to do that with the new one. 
so the torch doesn't cook the new TXV. All right, now we're all disconnected. Now all we gotta do is torch this baby. I, I soak all of this with water. I mean, as you can see, someone's already, it's already done in by the last guy. Thank you, whoever did it. So now I don't have to worry about burning. But we're gonna need to flow some nitrogen first so I don't get a ticket from the YouTube police. Go ahead and sand these babies up. I like to see it and you can see the, the solder melt easier. Do both. All right, now we can go flow some nitch. I'm gonna throw a cap on here with that, that doesn't have the gasket in there. That way the nitrogen doesn't just flow out that hole there. It doesn't have to go on super tight or anything. Just don't want the nitch going out the hole. Cause we don't want any oxygen in the line set when we're got the torch going. We don't want to create any oxidation. All right, this is my little flow indicator. Okay, YouTube police, this one's for you. Just a little ball comes up, just a skeeter leg, not too much. It says it right here. Braze. Right there. So you want it in that red zone. So it's coming out my blue hose, filling up the big line, then well, it's coming out the bottom of the TXV right now, actually, because I got it unhooked. That's why I come back down when I unsweat the TXV and reverse. I'll put the red on. But, uh, again, find your own system. What works for me may not work for you. But we got nitrogen flowing, you two, please, okay? So, uh, no tickets today, big dog. All right, now I wet all this. All this insulation on the side. Guys, I don't go for beauty points, okay? When it's, when it's this tight and this close, I gotta bring out fire and a torch this close. I don't go for beauty points, so. That's what I recommend to you. This isn't a YouTube tutorial where you got 360 degrees all the way around the pipe. I enjoy watching them though. They give you a good idea and all that. But this right here is reality. Tight, burning stuff. All right, dudes, I apologize for the dog. There's a dog in here, he's barking. Uh, this is my wife's oven mitt. This is my wife's oven mitt, by the way. She's been looking for this for about three years. Every time she bakes, she's cussing about, where is my freaking oven mitt? So she's only had one for this whole time. So what we're gonna do is just gonna put the torch on this braze here and sweat it off. Fire in the hole. First, the nitrogen to get this uh, TXV out so the nitrogen will be coming up the little liquid line and out the TXV so I can sweat it off up here. I just, I disconnect it just because it's easier. Again, you'll find your own system. Well, that works for me, what I like to do may not work for you. I just don't like to leave it connected because it's all in the way. You know, it might melt something, torch is going. But once you get it, all you gotta do is pull the coil out. I love these coils now. The good ones are glued in. That's it, baby. Oh, it's a boy. Congratulations. Congratulations, it's a boy. All right, now we gotta get that egg salad out of there. The nitrogen is flowing through the TXB now, down underneath the braise. Let's get that egg salad out of there. Yeah. 
Exhale, it is out. I say again, would you save it? There's nothing wrong with it. I mean, I didn't wrap a rag around it because I, I get rid of them, but what do you guys do? What do you pros do? Should I keep it and use it <clears throat> or trash it? Now I'm just going to sand up a little bit, clean all that up, hit, the, hit this with some sandpaper, get ready for the new one. All right, got the new one out. Comes with TXV tape. Like that cork tape comes with a new TXV. So we want to make sure it's good and that it's holding the nitrogen in it. If this doesn't hiss, then uh oh. All right, we're good. So you want to let it all out. That didn't hiss, it means the thing is leaking. These coils cost $1,000. $600. But I was told that they're under warranty, so that's good. Yeah, make sure you wear gloves when you handle these things. They'll cut you long and deep. So I'm going to pull the TXV off. I cut these ends off. Uh, Schrader, Schrader valve there. Cut it off with my pipe cutter. This has a cap on it. Just hit my pipe cutter and roll it around, but I'm going to pull the TXV off and I got to transfer the sides. These just unscrew off, screw here, screw down here, and this screws on. So all you do is just pull this off, put it on the left side of that one, pull this off, two screws, put it on the right side of the, of the new coil. That's all there is to that. It's just where the filter slides in. This is the filter rail. Got to take it off the old one, put it on the new one. Unbolt the TXV, get it up out of the way. There we go. I swedged that with my Spin swagers. Love this tool, man. Again, I'll leave all tools, tool links where you can get them in the video description below. You can order it and have it delivered to your house. I'll just put it in my drill. That's what it looks like. Put it in the hole. And swedge it out for you. It doesn't put any metal shavings in the pipe or nothing like that. I get a lot of comments about it. I've had good experiences with it. Again, I've done it this way for going on eight years now, and they're still kicking over at the old place. I still walk by them every now and then. That's how I know. Don't forget your little washer gasket here. Try not to melt it. If you want to, if you want to leave it in there, go ahead, but just try not to hit it with the torch when you're brazing this up. I got to cut this cap off and then swedge it out. All right, three quarter swedge here. I wear my wife's oven mitten from Publix, the grocery store, uh, because the pipe gets hot. Here we go. That's it. It is swaged out. Nice and clean. All right, I got the filter rail on my new one. All the goodies are on it. Again, it's just two screws here, here, then it pops off the side. You got the bottom here, two screws. The problem is they just sit in the water and they rust. That's what the problem is. That's where all the leaks are down on that bottom left corner so far. I'll show you the old one. Right down on the bottom left where it's all rusty. I mean, these are only two years old. This one was leaking over here too. You can see all the dark oil right there. These things just sit in the drain pan and rust. I mean, two years old, that's looking pretty, pretty rough, big dog. You'd have to double bag this one. She's ugly. Much just needs a good wiping, so I'm gonna give it a good wiping. All right, skid, got the new one in. 
it goes in really easy. Just pretty much drop it in, slides in. Got my three quarter pipe ready for braze. And I'll do that first and then I'll put the TXV on. Got it back there just so I don't cook it because the flame will be shooting back here. I don't want it, I don't want it, the TXV getting hit. I got the three quarter inch line brazed in. I had to wedge it, man. This thing kept kept slipping as the uh, solder would soften. It would come out of the pipe. So I had to throw my comb down there and wedge it with my pliers. Ugh, but I got it. So now I'm gonna do the TXV, braze it in up here. Got it bolted on. You wanna keep it cool though. So I got some of this cool gel. I'm also gonna wrap it in a wet rag. I've used some of that wet rag stuff that comes in a can. I like it. It was pretty cool, but a little messy, man. It's hard to get out of all the TXV stuff. Ah, this camera's having a hard time focusing. So I'm going to hit it with some cool gel and wrap it with a wet rag and braise that up. And then pressure test with nitrogen. Got a little buggery, but hey, when it's tight, I don't go for beauty points. I don't try to be perfect. Just make sure it don't leak. That's what I'm here for. All right, that looks good. Corner looks good. Oh, the mirror's fogging up. Oh, we got action. Let's bolt the old equalizing tube on. Just be careful not to kink it. kink this stuff this is the TXB bulb we'll put that on here after we pressure test just make sure none of this is leaking <clears throat> there's my 3 8 line braze for all the super text light to pick me apart you got a little boogery here but I don't try to be perfect when it's all tight insulation's all burning smoke alarms going off dogs barking <clears throat> but hey that'll work as long as it don't leak all right, Skid, now I got the big nitrogen tank hooked up. I'll try to get it to 200 PSI. And make sure it holds. I'll let it hold for about 20 mins. All right, there will work. 200. If that needle starts falling rapidly, don't panic. You got a leak, but don't panic. Just release the nitrogen. You can release it into the atmosphere. A lot of guys ask me that. What do you got to do with the nitrogen? You can just release it. That's legal. Release the nitrogen and go fix the leak. It happens from time to time. So I'm going to let this sit for 20 minutes at around 200 PSI. Well, I don't hear anything hissing. That's a good sign. From time to time I do. I still make mistakes. I mess up so what what are they gonna do ask me not to do coils anymore oh okay my pleasure so I'm just gonna hit it with bubbles make sure nothing's bubbling check behind the braze with my mirror if I don't see any bubbles no bubbles no troubles just while the nitrogen's holding for 20 minutes then I'll pull a vacuum and go eat my butt hair sandwich we'll vacuum it down to 300 microns <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to get my mirror and check behind the braze, make sure there's no troubles. Alright, we're a little over 20 minutes, 
and it is still holding at 200 psi no hissing no bubbles so I feel pretty confident to release I hook up the testos to pull a vacuum because it's got the micron gauge and all that nothing fancy just an old maintenance man maintenance man get up All right, Brosaline, got the old testos hooked up. Got it hooked up to the vacuum, hoses, everything's open. All I gotta do is turn it on. I like to put some of this nylog around the threads, the service valve threads, put them around there and put the caps on just for a little extra, extra suction, a little extra protection. Put them around these threads, the gauge threads and that, those threads. Again, nylog, I'll leave a link in the description. All right, I think I'm hooked up. Fire in the hole. Three hundred Mickeys, here I come. That's three hundred microns to all you new guys. And these testers I hook up the micron gauge here where the yellow hose goes and plugs in up here. It works for me. It's my system. Again, you know, once you get out here and get the get the go on, you'll find your own system. Oh, it's not perfect. No, the compressor's going to die in 15 years. It's not perfect. Oh, okay. Coming on down. I forgot to mention, y'all remember that compressor that died on the last video I did? Well, I replaced it. It was a rush job because the compressor, they're all like on back order. Things are hard to get. And it, the compressor came in the day before the people were moving in. So it was kind of a rush job. I couldn't film it, but man, I was blowing the, the lines out with nitrogen after I took the old compressor out and chunks of metal were flying out, dude. It was crazy. I'm like, no freaking way. I guess the compressor like exploded inside or something, but it was a rush job. Because uh, it was on back order, like we couldn't get it, so they came in the day before, and the people were moving in. I'm gonna go put the air handler back together. Let this come on down. Come on down to 300 Mickey's. All right, bro, I got the TXV sensing bulb on, nice and tight. Got the little voltage back in. Got the transformer bolted back on. Door switch. Hooked up the power, I had to remove all that because the torch was blowing around in here, didn't want to burn any wires. And this is the tape that goes around the TXV, cork tape, insulation, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put it around here, seal it up, and we will go check the vacuum. Should be getting close to 300 microns. Again, if you want to see like long videos, like right down to the bolt, just compressor change outs, coils, check out WWHVAC. Man, Walt has a fantastic channel. I love studying that guy's channel. He's got over hour long videos. I mean, he takes you all the way through the filter dryer. He just does everything right there on camera. I know I pieced, uh, you know, kind of pieced it together just for the my camera battery sake and video length. But all right, I'm going to put this around the TXV and I'll be back. All right, got the TXV sensing bulb wrapped up. You have to do this. Got to keep it nice and insulated so that it fluctuates the superheat. It's kind of tight. I couldn't get the tape around good, so it ripped apart on me. I'm still not a big fan of this first company mess. I mean, this is really tight. It's hard to work, but got to do what I got to do. Just don't worry about it being perfect. And if you're a crappy brazer, you can wrap a little tape around your brace so nobody can see it. All right, skid bros. We're all buttoned up. Got the new filter in. Still pulling a vacuum. Whew. These things are time consuming. Probably won't be filming anymore, but this is what it's gonna look like over and over and over because they're all the same out here, I've noticed. They're all the 32UCXQBR, that model. I think the one, one bedrooms are 19, but pretty much the same deal. And I'll leave some uh, Goodman coil videos when I replace the Goodman heat pump coils over at the last property. I'll leave links to those videos in case you wanna check them out. The coil replacement videos aren't my biggest videos. And it's real time consuming, guys, so 
might not be filming anymore, but this is it. Still pulling a vacuum. Let me go check, see where it's at. All right, 284 microns. I like it. I'm going to call it. I'm going to go ahead and release the refrigerant. I'd love to sit here and nerd out and all that stuff, like turn it off and, you know, all that other stuff. Put it in nitrogen, vacuum it back down. This is apartment maintenance. You got to do the best you can and keep going. I got dishwashers to install. Things, other things to go do. All right, big dog, you leave it in a vacuum. You don't break vacuum. I took the service valve caps back off and we're gonna release the refrigerant. Remember, we put the refrigerant in the condensing unit. So we're gonna just undo the little liquid line and bring it back to positive pressure. Going back to positive pressure. This is a uh, pretty new refrigerant as well. It got charged on Friday, so this is virgin refrigerant pretty much. It was low. Somebody came and charged it up. So that's why I also chose to pump it down because everything's hard to get right now. Down to one can of refrigerant. So I went the old pump down route. And if you want to recover, you can. You can do that. Again, get out here, jump in the pool with us, and find your system. Don't try to be perfect. I just do the best I can. I got other things to go do too, you know. This is apartment maintenance, man. I'm not a HVAC guy. Where I get all the time in the world and can nerd out and you know fill it back up with nitrogen and vacuum it back down and you know how you know there's really thorough ways of doing things but gotta keep it moving here man. So we're back up to positive pressure. So it shouldn't be that low since it got charged on Friday. All right, got the old thermostat on, 78 in here, got it to 74. Inside's running, let's go check out the outside. I'll let it run for about 15 minutes, let it equalize. The old camera battery's dying. That's why I can only get pieces, give you all the cliff notes. All right, the outside's running. Moving some good heat out the top. I'm gonna let it run for a little while. It's a TXV, so you gotta charge by a subcool. And the subcool is 2.6. I'm gonna let it run a while, let it equalize. Superheat is 26.7. If it was a piston, new guys, you would charge by superheat. But we got a TXV in this one. So we got to charge by subcool. I'm gonna let it run for a little bit. It's kind of cool out today. Mid 70s, it's like 75 ish. But. I gotta get that sub cool up. I'll give it a squirt. All right, that super heat's still low, so we're gonna give it some juice. Let me purge my line here. Got my tank hooked up. Get the old air out of there. You don't want air getting in your new coil, big dog. And give it a little popping. Don't want to overshoot. Little at a time. All right, 12 degrees sub cool. I'm gonna leave it right there. So I'm not taking any serious calculations right now. I just this is better than holding my hand up there. I mean, I know it's probably not blowing out at 48 degrees, but it feels nice and cold. I'm not taking any serious calculations, Super Tech. Settle down. This is better than holding my hand up there. 47, 48. Yeah, they're gonna be good. They're gonna be good. Came down a degree, that's good. It was 78. Came down to 77, that's good. All right, I think we're gonna be good to go. Again, if you guys want like the hour long play by play videos, check out WWHVAC or Walt, man. He's got a fantastic channel. I love studying his stuff. And uh, 
Ooh, this is time consuming. My battery's almost dead, so won't be doing any more coil videos probably because I mean it's all cookie cutter. They're all the same one. It'll look just like this one. So that's it. Just wanted to show you that I do them. Like, subscribe, share. Let's get this thing to 50,000. See you on the next one. Later.